Hey everybody, welcome to the lounge. All my fellow loungers, chillers, bowlers, and grillers. Today we're going to do some chilling and grilling. We're going to make some baby back ribs and potato salad. Before we get started, I just want to say hi to Leo from Lebanon. Cheers. So um, this is a very long process, so we're going to just jump right into it right now. So grab yourself a cold one, put your feet up, kick back and relax, and we're going to get started. Okay, first we're going to go through the ingredients for the potato salad. That's where we're going to start off on this. We have salt, pepper, olive oil. This is not, you know, the extra virgin that I had before. This is just regular olive oil. Apple cider vinegar, a red onion, celery seed, some sugar, and your potatoes. Now these potatoes are already done, but because I didn't really think that I'm going to go through the whole process of showing you how to boil potatoes. So what you want to do is fill up a pot, a pot, a bit about a pot like this with your potatoes. This is a half of a five pound bag of potatoes. So you want to fill them up, put water in there above the potatoes, bring the water to a boil. Once it starts boiling, then you want to boil them. These took about a half hour. You'll see the skin start to, to peel up and crack. And then you'll know that they're pretty much done. Stick a fork into them and make sure that they're very tender. Then you want to take those potatoes out and let them cool for a while because you don't want to peel hot potatoes. One, they're very mushy. And two, you'll burn yourself. And that's not good. You don't want to burn yourself. Do you want to burn yourself? I don't think you want to burn yourself, do you? Okay, anyway. So after that, um, what, right now what we're going to do is we're going to peel the potatoes and show you what we're going to do next. Next, you want to make sure you have a semi-sharp knife. It doesn't have to be terribly sharp and get your potato. You don't want to really cut into your potato, you want to kind of just peel it. If you're lucky you get a nice big peel like that at the beginning, that doesn't always work like that though. And, like that. and if you see a black spot in there, you can kind of dig that out. Or you can just give that to whoever's in your family that you don't like. That's up to you. Tom just laughed because he's been eating black pieces of potato for years and he didn't even know it. What? Can't see it but I'm shaking my head. And you want to do this for the whole potato, all the potatoes. And this is a very tedious process so enjoy this. Okay so we have our potatoes all peeled now. They have to be cut next but before we do that you want to chop your onion. I already peeled it. I don't think you needed to see that process. So you're gonna, we're, we want to use about half of this onion. So the way I do it is like this. I cut about halfway down, making like little slits in this. I know, who gives a slit? What's that, I'm corny, Tom? Is that what you said? Mm -hmm. I heard something. My tears are not just from the onion. They're not from laughing either, are they? Nope. I'm sorry, what's that mean? <laughs> yeah. So anyway, this is what you want to do for the onion. And Tom's just going to show you just one time. You're just going to cut it down like this. And see, it makes nice, nice little squares. And then just keep going until where you cut them slits and that'll be enough. We chopped up our onions. That's about the size of the onions that you want. That's half of an onion. Next we're going to put all our ingredients in together that we marinated. So we're going to start out with two tablespoons of vegetable oil or olive oil in this case is what I'm using. Okay we have one and a half tablespoons of apple cider vinegar. Pour that in there. We have a half a tablespoon of sugar. Put that in there. And over here I have a half a tea, I don't know, exactly a half a tablespoon of salt and a teaspoon of black pepper in here. I put them in together. See how I have them there. Okay. And now we want to put a sprinkle of celery seed. And you're going to ask me, what's a sprinkle? Oh, that's a sprinkle. See that? Like three shakes. That's a sprinkle. Let them marinate 
Um, we're going we're gonna to cut up the potatoes. Well, actually, I'm going to mix this up and then we're going to let the stuff marinate for a little while. So let me cut up the potatoes next. All right, we're going to show you. This is what we do with the potato. Cut it in half like that. Always put it flat side down. That actually makes it easier to, to slice the potato. This is how I do it anyway. You can do it any way you want. I really don't care. Just do it thin slices. Try not to cut your finger. Same thing with the other one. And then add them into your marinade that you already... Well, I already did one potato before this and then we'll continue to do this with all the potatoes. And then we'll show you the next step. Yeah. So we cut up our potatoes, we put them in a bowl in our marinade that we had. Now, you want to make sure that you put a little extra oil in. I didn't have quite enough oil in there. Maybe another tablespoon, maybe two tablespoons. You want it thick enough that it's going to get all over the potatoes. And you can always add a little bit more even if they start mixing and it's not really there. So you want to mix them all together like this. Get that marinade all over the potatoes like, like that. And then you want to either put handy wrap on it or a lid. I luckily have a bowl with a lid, which most people do. So, And then you want to put that in the refrigerator for several hours. We're going to do it as long as the ribs are cooking. Uh, if not, actually, the best way is actually overnight. And then the next day you could actually go from here and make, make that up. But because we're doing this video all in one time, we're going to do that right now. We're going to let that sit in the refrigerator for um, probably about three hours. First thing you want to do is preheat your oven. I have it at 275. That's because I'm going to do it in a little less time. I'm going to do it at about two hours, 275. Usually I'll do it at 250 for three hours. But because I want to go a little bit faster than that, I'm going to do it at two hours today at 275. Let that, let that preheat. And now, grab your meat. Okay, so you want to go over. And the first thing you want to do, go over to your sink. You want to take your meat out of the pack. So we're going to cut it. I'm going to cut it right through the pack. As long as I don't cut my hand off, I'll be all right. There's one. I'm going to cut this in thirds about. Uh, let me see. There we go. Put your knife somewhere. Like that. And rinse your meat off. I'm gonna put that over there. Because sometimes there's a little like grit on the top of it. So you want to just rinse that off. Make sure your meat's nice and clean. You want clean meat. Put that on your paper towel. Then we're gonna take the knife. it off so you can hear. We're going to go about in half on this one, right? Let me make sure Tom gave me the right size of knife so I don't cut my hand off. I'm going to have to feel in between the bone here. Oh, my knife's getting dull. And of course, these of course the uh, bone is right there. Okay, that was not a straight cut, but we don't care about that. All right, so it's the end of that knife. We don't need that anymore. Remember, rinse it off. One of the things I like to do is afterwards, always clean your sink out with some type of antibacterial stuff to get all that crap out of there. Do that. You can actually feel the gritty little pieces of bone on there sometimes from when they butchered it up. Put that in there aside. Grab some more paper towels and you want to just pat this dry. Pat 
Pat your meat dry. Okay, there you go. We're ready for the next step. Now wash your hands. All right, so we washed our meat. We patted it dry. Now you want to take it. Use one hand. Don't use both, because if you use both, then you need to go wash your hands to touch the container. We're going to now use our essence that you're going to put on there as a dry rub. But a lot of people have been asking me about essence, you know, what exactly is it, and I should put a recipe on. So I had written it down so you guys can actually just copy that. And uh, this will save Tom a lot of typing on the screen. So there you go. There's the essence recipe. Anyway, so you take your, your essence and you sprinkle it on there. And then kind of just pat it. Flip it over. Do the same thing on this side. Pat it. Put it back over here. Now before I do the next step, I have to wash my hands. Okay, so next, pull your foil up like this. And then carefully, and then some of you are asking probably right now, how come you turn the oven on? I thought we were grilling. Yes, that is how we're gonna finish it. But we're gonna start out by putting it in the oven. Now, you push that down, it's actually like you're you're actually like wrapping a Christmas present. Pull the ends like that, like or making a paper airplane. Then kind of roll that up because we want all that fat and everything to stay inside there and not come out. Pull them in. Go like so. Okay, so we're gonna put that on our our tray. Put that in the oven. Middle rack, bend the oven, close the door, put your timer on for two hours for 275, three hours for 250. Might as well grab myself a beer and wait now. All right, so we pulled our marinated potatoes out of the refrigerator and now we're going to add the mayonnaise to it. Take a couple scoops of this. We're going to start out with just two scoops and just mix it up and you're probably going to have to add more because it doesn't look like it's nearly enough. Looks like some dry potato salad right now. But that's how you start it out. You don't want to put too much because you can't take it out, but you can always add. So let's take a nice heaping scoop in there. Mix it up. I am going to put one more scoop in. I like creamy potato salad. If you don't, if you like it a little bit less, that's up to you. You can always try it out. See what it's like. Make sure you mix it up good. Nothing worse than getting a whole fork full of just Mayonnaise. Okay, that's looking pretty good. What do you think, Tom? Yeah. Yes, Tom does talk every once in a while. Yeah, that's about how it works. You can put a little bit more in it if you want it, or leave it like that. Then we're just gonna finish up the ribs next, and then we'll be ready to eat. Okay, our ribs got done, so we, we brought them out. We're next, we're gonna take them out to the grill, but first I wanted to show you, I use Sweet Baby Ray's 
barbecue sauce, you can use whatever your favorite kind is. You want to fill up about a half a bowl of that, and then you want to have a brush to put it on. And of course, don't forget your beer because you need that for your soda and your oven mitt. Um, I already had the grill preheated. I have it on medium low. So now we're going to carry this stuff out and put it on the grill. Okay, so now we're going to put them on the grill. Put them on this way. So they're kind of like up in the air like that. And we're going to let them sit on there until they get a little bit crispy on there. Make sure I have my grill just right. I don't want it too hot, I don't want it to burn. In the meantime, I can throw all this stuff away. You want that to cook till it gets a little bit crispy on the outside, then you're going to flip them over and then we're going to put the sauce on. Okay, if you, if you pick it up a little bit and you see any like grill marks on there, which I do on this one, you're going to flip that over like that. Then you can put your sauce Nice and generous, generously. And let that sit there like that. Let's see if any of these other ones have any grill marks on them yet. No, not yet. minute or so for them. They don't take that long, maybe a minute or two on each side and flip them over. When that gets grill marks on that side, you're going to flip it over again and we're going to sauce the other side. Alright, so I flipped the other two over. This one's ready to be flipped now back the other way. Take it like that, put that like that, and now I'm going to do the same thing to this side. And remember, barbecue sauce will burn, so you got to be careful with it. You don't want it to burn because, unless you like that black bird taste. And then we're going to let that cook a little bit like that, and then I'm going to turn it over again and then put more sauce on it. Because that's just how we do it. Okay, so I flipped them for the last time over this way. Put one more layer of barbecue sauce on there. Turn my grill down to almost low. Just going to let it sit there for just a few minutes. I'm going to actually put my lid down just for a little bit. I usually don't do that, but I am going to do that this time. Just for a little bit. A couple minutes, then they're ready to go. All right, time for the lift up the grill. Here we go. Put them on your foil. I like to use tongs this way they can't fall apart on you. Pick them up like that, put them down like that, and I'm going to let this stuff burn off my, I'm going to carry them in the house, and we're just about ready to eat. Alright, well, now we're going to try it out. Some of my favorite potato salad right there. I'm trying to get off a piece without making a mess out of this whole thing. I'm gonna try to get off a piece of meat like this. I've got anything out of that. It's good. Well, that's the way I make my ribs. There's no right or wrong way to do it. You do how you want to, but this is just something I wanted to show you how we like to make them. Well, there is a wrong way. Overcooked, undercooked. Well, yeah, you could burn them, you could destroy them. Slab them in tartar sauce. Right, but this is my favorite way to make them. I'm just saying if there's somebody made them right, a different way, it's no different. It's whatever they want to do. Yeah. Exactly. So I hope you like the potato salad and the ribs. Don't forget to subscribe for more. Also, bandanas, hats, t-shirts can be bought at the store, which the link is in my banner, right?
right? What? The link for the store is in the oh, bottom. description. Yeah, that. Well, until next time, we'll meet you at the lounge. Also, if any of you out there like tartar sauce and ribs, leave a comment. <laughs> like and subscribe, especially. What? Is anybody out there who likes tartar sauce in the ribs? Oh, you like tartar sauce in the ribs? No, I, I said that earlier. I don't know what he's talking about right now, but anyway, until next time, until next time, we'll meet you at the lounge. What? Well, I did it. Yeah, you're you're right on. What? Squares. And then just keep going until where you cut them slits and that'll be enough. We chopped up our onions. That's about the size of the onions that you want. That's half of an onion. Next we're going to put all our ingredients in together that we marinated. So we're going to start out with two tablespoons of vegetable oil. Or olive oil in this case is what I'm using. Okay, we have one and a half tablespoons of apple cider vinegar. Pour that in there. We have a half a tablespoon of sugar. Put that in there. And over here, I have a half a tea, I don't know, exactly, a half a tablespoon of salt and a teaspoon of black pepper in here. I put them in together. See how I have them there. Okay, and now we want to put a sprinkle of celery seed. And you're going to ask me, what's a sprinkle? Oh, that's a sprinkle. You see that? Like three shakes. That's a sprinkle. Let them marinate. Um, we're, going to, we're going to cut up the potatoes. Well, actually, I'm going to mix this up, and then we're going to let the stuff marinate for a little while. So let me cut up the potatoes next. All right, we're going to show you. This is what we do with the potato. Cut it in half like that. Always put it flat side down, and it actually makes it easier to, to slice the potato. This is how I do it anyway. You can do it any way you want. I really don't care. Just do it thin slices. Try not to cut your finger. Same thing with the other one. And then add them into your... I'm going to cut it right through the pack. As long as I don't cut my hand off, I'll be alright. There's one. I'm going to cut this in thirds about. Uh, let me see. There we go. Put your knife somewhere. Like that. And... Rinse your meat off. I'm gonna put that over there. Cause sometimes there's a little like grit on the top of it. So you wanna just rinse that off. Make sure your meat's nice and clean. You want clean meat. Put that on your paper towel. Then we're gonna take the knife. Turn it off so you can hear. We're gonna go about in half on this one, right? Let me make sure Tom gave me the right size of the knife so I don't cut my hand off. I'm gonna have to feel in between the bone here. Oh, my knife's getting dull. And of course, these. Of course, the uh, bone is right there. Okay, that was not a straight cut, but we don't care about that. All right, so it's the end of that knife. We don't need that anymore. Remember, rinse it off. One of the things I like to do is afterwards, always clean your sink out with some type of antibacterial stuff to get all that crap out of there. Do that. Hey everybody, welcome to the lounge. All my fellow loungers, chillers, bowlers, and grillers. Today we're going to do some chilling and grilling. We're going to make some baby back ribs and potato salad. 
Before we get started, I just want to say hi to Leo from Lebanon. Cheers. So um, this is a very long process, so we're going to just jump right into it right now. So grab yourself a cold one, put your feet up, kick back and relax, and we're going to get started. Okay, first we're going to go through the ingredients for the potato salad. That's where we're going to start off on this. We have salt, pepper, olive oil. This is not, you know, the extra virgin that I had before. This is just regular olive oil. Apple cider vinegar, a red onion, celery seed, some sugar, and your potatoes. Now these potatoes are already done, but because I didn't really think that I'm going to go through the whole process of showing you how to boil potatoes. So what you want to do is fill up a pole, a bottle, I'm going to, a bit about potato, a pot like this with your potatoes. This is a half of a five pound bag of potatoes. So you want to fill them up, put water in there above the potatoes, bring the water to a boil. Once it starts boiling, then you want to boil them. These took about a half hour. You'll see the skin start to, to peel up and crack. And then you'll know that they're pretty much done. Stick a fork into them and make sure that they're very tender. Then you want to take those potatoes out and let them cool for a while because you don't want to peel hot potatoes. One, they're very mushy. And two, you'll burn yourself. And that's not good. You don't want to burn yourself. Do you want to burn yourself? I don't think you want to burn yourself, do you? Okay, anyway, so after that, um, what, right now what we're going to do is we're going to peel the potatoes. Marinate that you already... Well, I already did one potato before this and then we'll continue to do this with all the potatoes and then we'll show you the next step. Yeah. So we cut up our potatoes, we put them in a bowl in our marinade that we had. Now you want to make sure that you put a little extra oil in. I didn't have quite enough oil in there. Maybe another tablespoon, maybe two tablespoons. You want it thick enough that it's going to get all over the potatoes. And you can always add a little bit more even if they start mixing and it's not really there. So you want to mix them all together like this get that marinade all over the potatoes like like that and then you want to either put handy wrap on it or a lid I luckily have a bowl with a lid which most people do so and then you want to put that in the refrigerator for several hours we're going to do it as long as the ribs are cooking uh, if not actually the best way is actually overnight and then the next day you could actually go from here and make, make that up. But because we're doing this video all one time, we're going to do that right now. We're going to let that sit in the refrigerator for um, probably about three hours. First thing you want to do is preheat your oven. I have it at 275. That's because I'm going to do it in a little less time. I'm going to do it at about two hours, 275. Usually I'll do it at 250 for three hours, but because I want to go a little bit faster than that, I'm going to do it at two hours today at 275. Let that, let that preheat. And now, grab your meat. Okay, so you want to go over, and the first thing you want to do, go over to your sink. You want to take your meat out of the pack. So we're going to cut it and show you what we're going to do next. Next, you want to make sure you have a semi-sharp knife. It doesn't have to be terribly sharp. And get your potato. You don't want to really cut into your potato. You want to kind of just peel it. If you're lucky, you get a nice big peel like that at the beginning. That doesn't always work like that, though. And, like that. and if you see a black spot in there, you can kind of dig that out. Or you can just give that to whoever's in your family that you don't like. That's up to you. Tom just laughed because he's been eating black pieces of potato for years and he didn't even know it. What? Can't see it but I'm shaking my head. And you want to do this for the whole potato, all the potatoes. And this is a very tedious process so enjoy this. Okay so we have our potatoes all peeled now. They have to be cut next but before we do that you want to chop your onion, I already peeled it. I don't think you needed to see that process. So you're gonna, we're, we wanna use about half of this onion. So the way I do it is like this. I cut about halfway down, making like little slits in this. I know, who gives a slit? 
What's that? I'm corny, Tom? Is that what you said? Mm-hmm. I heard something. My tears are not just from the onion. They're not from laughing either, are they? Nope. I'm sorry, what's that mean? <laughs> yeah. So anyway, this is what you want to do for the onion. And Tom's just going to show you just one time. You're just going to cut it down like this. And see, it makes nice, nice little 